Swallow, there. This is a video about one of the most important edible insects of Africa. Uh, we don't know a lot about them here in Europe, in the Western world, and there are different reasons for that. I'm talking about Aucosoma centaurus, the biggest dynasty beetle of Africa. It can reach sizes up to 9 cm long, or it get up to 50, 60 grams, so this is a real, real big uh, beetle. So it's very rarely that you find this uh, animal in the breeding scene in Europe. Uh, one of the most important reason is that you can't find or hardly find any trustful dealers in Africa today that uh, would send you larvae or a living beetle for your breeding project. That's a pity and that's one of the really sad stories about entomology in Africa that it's at, uh, actually that is very difficult and also sometimes dangerous uh, to travel the tropical Africa um, in search of interesting uh, insects for breeding and that you hardly find any people who uh, with whom you can establish a trustful relationship in exchange uh, of uh, insects. Yeah, that's one of the reasons because Algosoma centaurus is a major pest insect in Africa and it can uh, appear in huge masses in the time uh, when it's uh, ready to fly around and is of course attracted by street lights and also there it's uh, collected. It said that a man can collect a bucket of five liters filled with Algosoma centaurus in a night when they are active mostly November to December. So what I will start today is a breeding project because I was lucky to find a man in Germany, Frank Rosso from uh, Cornelian Profi, who also had uh, Algosoma centaurus. Probably um, he also uh, made his Algosoma lay some eggs and he sent me 10 of the uh, larvae of this animal. And of course I try to establish um, a breeding project where we can keep one generation after the other. There are also very uh, rarely insects, um, Agosomo, uh, from Thailand available, for Taiwan, excuse me, uh, available. So that's a long way from Africa to Taiwan to Europe. But uh, why not bring them from Africa? I don't understand it. If you are uh, a trustful person in Africa that um, would like to establish connections to us Europeans, that wonder about the richness of the entomophagic world of Africa, yeah, please contact me. That's one of the main problems also in the field of entomophagy. So what we see here, this is uh, one of the small uh, boxes. It's filled with uh, leaf material with uh, white rot, fresh white rotten uh, water. Let's see whether we find the larva here so that we can show how they look when they are small. Now this one isn't here anymore because I think this was the head capsule of the inter. Well, let's see whether we... No, no, this is gone. So this is probably dead, can happen, but um, this is sad because now it's only nine uh, left here. So this one is living, that's night. So look here, this is the small L2 larva of Algosoma centaurus from Africa. I have to take a lot of attention now to these animals that they don't die in the stage of the larva because the more they die, the smaller the possibility that you have a male and a female at the same time so that you can start the breeding project with them. So they just go back here. I prepared a big 65 liter box uh, for them 
and we will uh, start now a breeding project that will last for around two years bec because it seems to be that this is the life cycle of Augusoma centaurus, the biggest dynasty beetle of Africa. There is another species, Augusoma hippocrates, uh, only endemic to Gaboon, uh, described first time 1996, while Augusoma centaurus is described by Fabricius already 1770. There's also a very uh, up-to-date report about the contribution of Augusoma centaurus beetle to rural livelihoods in East Cameroon, an interesting study report. You will find it in the internet for download um, if you like. And mostly it says that 37% of the people that they ask during this study uh, appreciate the consumption of algosomo beetle more than other protein products like meat and fish. That's important thing. 40% of the people like beetles more than meat and fish. Think about what it would mean if this happens in Europe too. Also, of course, it was found that they contain important vitamins and uh, minerals like iron, calcium and so on, and they are also from the side of the fat content and the spectrum of amino acids richer than traditional meat food from beef, cattle or uh, fish. So this is a major pest, I already uh, said it, in, in Africa because they the larvae feed mostly on uh, stems of the raffia palm and the pandanus palm. So these are two economically important palms in Africa and around the world. And of course uh, also this kind of pest control. If you eat uh, the larvas and the, the beetle that it would be a good way of pest control. So you can uh, also benefit from the pest insects. Yeah. Raffia palms and uh, pandanus palms, they appear mostly in wetlands, so probably it's a good idea to keep the larvae not too dry. They appear in the tropical uh, area in Africa until 10 degrees to the north and south of the equator, so there's a lot of water there and we are uh, invited to not let them uh, be too dry in their substrate. One of the problems with entomology in, in Africa also is the uh, different languages in all the different tribes that live there. The, in this study, they, I think around 15 different ethnic groups uh, they studied and uh, of course they analyzed all the different kind of names they give to these animals. And the names, of course, they are different in every of these ethnic, ethnic groups and this makes it also different for scientists to find out yeah, what kind of beetle do they mean. Not only this is the problem that the names are different but a lot of uh, insects are not named uh, as insects but they are named after the host plants that they are found on. Um, that's one of the stories from the ancient uh, hunter-gatherer times because insects they are classified as game um, and they are collected uh, from the wild they are not cultivated that's one of the things that starts now with entomophagy in the western world but also in Asia where people start uh, to cultivate edible insects and that's what we try to do here too with Argosoma centaurus. Here you can see a list of the appearance of different insects in the eastern region of Cameroon. So you can see that the adult Argosoma beetles normally appear November to December here, while the larvae are found all year round. Palm beetle grubs can be Rynchophorus or can be Oryctes monoceros. They are found also all year long. 
Sometimes it's also different, of course, for locals to, to find out whether it's is this a larva of um, um, or or is it the larva of Algodoma inside the stem of the Rofiopon. You never know. Here also you see some pictures and here's the host plant. Um, 61% raffia palms, 33% pandanus palm. A little they are found also in sawdust and decaying uh, tree trunks. So we have a chance for cultivation. And um, of course you, you can see also that in Africa children play with these beetles that you can see on this very famous picture. You find it everywhere in the internet. This young boy with a huge uh, algosoma male and in the other hand, um, a female. Let's see whether we are lucky enough to be able to bring this small larvae that I have now uh, to the adult stage and that we can make experiments uh, with Algosoma centaurus also in Europe. If you happen to go to Africa, bring some uh, to Europe for our further experiments, um, please contact me. Thanks for watching.